So I hope you enjoyed that. That's one of the most advanced surgical training models, clinical skills and surgical training models, of course, and, and it doesn't come cheap. Um, but I think it's good as a taste to see what is happening in some of the more progressive veterinary faculties um, and is something to aspire to. There are also ways, of course, of maybe universities jointly buying such a model. Um, and, uh, and so I, I think it is a feasible, possible tool that um, many countries and universities can, in fact, invest in. But I want to see first if anyone has any questions about what you've just seen with the Sindava K9 um, uh, on the screen here. Does anyone want to ask anything about it? Any questions or comments? Yep. I was also I was always wondering uh, how difficult it is to uh, change the parts of the canine. So uh, there is a procedure done on the canine, and now there are stitches on it. Uh, part of the uh, intestine is cut. How uh, uh, is this uh, restored, mm -hmm. and how? Uh, uh, hard is it uh, may be expensive to be restored? Yes, the, the, many of the parts, many of the organs are um, replaceable. So you can buy from the company um, replace, replaceable parts and they're of course much cheaper than the full dog. So the full dog itself is in the region of 20,000 euros. Um, but you can also buy um, the head and the neck or the, the main body separately and of course the individual organs separately um, to work on or to work as um, to replace the used items. Um, you can do multiple procedures on each of those organs. The intestine, for example, is very long. So you can do many, many um, procedures of the enterotomy, the uh, resection, and then the anastomosis um, as students because there's so much of it. And even the parts that are worked on can then be um, used by the more junior um, students who want to just work um, on a table, following video clips first, um, becoming familiar with the, the intestine and, and working with suturing um, and suture practice, different suture patterns. So even the used parts can be used again um, in other areas. Um, and if you're working with the liver and the spleen, for example, again, you can do lots of practice on them and then you can replace them. Um, they're much cheaper than the main dog, but the but the more complex models, which might have 50, 100 different layers within them, all built up, and, and uh, vasculature within the organ, they're, of course, more expensive. Um, all the information you can find on the um, Sindava website, some information through our alternatives database on the interniche.org website, um, and then you can contact the company directly to find out about um, options for, for replacement too. Any other comments or questions on, the, on this? Okay, so I will show you now some, some software um, and some other video clips. Um, first, I thought, while we're on the subject of models, let me just show you um, one of the spay-neuter models. So you can see here, um, we have a, a spay-neuter insert on the table, um, and in the previous talk, you, we also saw um, a re wide range of different models too. But these are just some clips that show the procedure being done so you can uh, get an idea of the quality of the models and the opportunities to practice different procedures. Okay, so that's... Um, that's, there's, there's several different spay-neuter models from different companies that you can buy. This is also something that could be developed, of course, here within Bulgaria. Okay. Um, and uh, we can look at the glass... No, I'll show you the video clips first. Hang on. Um, so this here now... No, sorry. This here is going to show you a model of where real animals, for example, ethically sourced animals, um, 
can be preserved and then perfused and pulsation is added. So this is the Abud method for, um, with the living cadaver, as, as it's called. So you get an idea of how you can ma work with management of bleeding. Um, and a number of different teachers have developed models like this. In Sao Paulo, in, in Brazil, we also have teachers who work with animal cadavers at perfusion and pulsation of colored water in order to practice clinical skills and surgery training. So first I will show you this clip with a fox. forgot it gets loud there and now I'll show you with um, a human cadaver <laughs> So you're really practicing your surgery. You're really, you've got all the structures there because it's a, a real uh, human or animal um, uh, cadaver that you uh, have perfusion and pulsation added to. <laughs> And this can be for general surgery or very specific areas like neurosurgery. I showed you a photograph yesterday of this. Um, we've also interviewed Dr. Abud at length and uh, filmed him uh, with, the, with some training of neurosurgery. Um, and this will be um, in both one of our other episodes, but also as a separate, more medical-focused surgery um, episode later. That's the artificial aneurysm. And you can also, to some degree, um, allow for coagulation by adding protein to blood, for example. But that's certainly an area where, where there could be some additional improvement in the future. These are slightly older clips, so that the quality is not so good. We've got some good clips to come later that we took ourselves. And again, this shows that you don't need to be doing animal experiments for training uh, these aspects of surgery. Okay. So both the non-animal models and um, preservation of cadavers and then either using them as they are or um, pulse having um, perfusion and pulsation uh, are, are amongst the many options you can do. So what I'll do now is show you the... Um, uh, equine colic software. So this is um, animations produced at the University of Georgia in the US um, where you can both help understand anatomy but also the development of different conditions. And examinations as well, how to examine, what to expect. And again, like 
the models, the simpler models, or the more complex models like the Sindhava canine. This is all about preparing you and training you and you developing those skills so that when you do work with real animal patients, you've got the confidence and the competence um, both generally and, and for specific procedures in order to work safely and um, effectively as, um, in terms of how you feel the, uh, the procedure's going. So you can see here we have the uh, equine colic CD. There's another one of the equine distal limb, which is more, a little bit more basic and good for students. This is good for students and uh, um, early professionals as well. So what we can do, um, we can look at, I'm just going to give you a taste of this software because um, we don't have time to look at it in detail. But if, for example, we look under um, categories of disease, um, or um, we can also look at uh, various diseases, let's see, here we are, disease, and then we'll look at the cecum, and then strangulation obstruction, and then cecocolic intersusception. So you can see there's a, we're going to very, one specific condition, but there's a lot of others we could be looking at as well. So we have options here. First is the disease movie. Sequel colic intussusception is a very uncommon cause of colic in horses and has been associated with inflammation of the mucosa caused by tapeworm infection. This condition is manifested by invagination of the cecum into the lumen of the right ventral colon. Because chronic forms of the condition have been identified, it is presumed that the apex of the cecum first invaginates into the cecal body, and the cecum then invaginates into the right ventral colon. Due to pressure on the cecal blood vessels at the cecocolic junction, the cecum becomes ischemic. In some cases, distension of the small intestine may occur. So that explains the condition and how it forms. And again, um, it gives you a chance to really visualize the structure and the process. The second option here then is the VR movie. So this is where with your cursor, you can control the position and view from different angles. And you can see on the bottom right, you have the orientation of the horse as well. So again, this helps prepare you for understanding this condition for uh, examination, diagnosis, and then for treatment. Next, we have the rectal exam. Another short clip. Rectal examination findings in horses with cecal colic intussusception can be quite variable, with the most commonly reported finding being an inability to locate the cecum. With careful palpation in some horses, a mass can be palpated in the right dorsal quadrant of the abdomen. Other findings commonly encountered in affected horses are gas-distended loops of small intestine in the middle of the abdomen. And then we have the, the radiology, the ultrasound. And there's three different options here. We'll have a look at just one of them. Okay. So here with the ultrasound, this is where, where it was done. Um, and you can hide a hint. You get a hint, that's right. Um, so again, you're working with the students as the teacher and you get them to identify the structures um, and this is something you can practice. You have a hint here, there's a line to follow, to note, and then the answer, how to identify this condition. Okay, And then there's, as I say, two other ultrasounds here as well. So that's all I'm going to show you of this software, it's just to get an idea of the um, what it can offer, and this is one of many softwares, of course. Um, but what we've been looking at is just this condition. There's three different aspects here, and this is from just the cecum. And then there's all the other organs there too. And this is, in turn, just diseases. So you can see the power of technology to support the learning process. You can get so much into software with animations, software with images and labels, software with videos. So um, just a taste of one software. So I'll close this and we'll go on to the next item. So that's the Glasshorse 
equine colic software, which you can buy directly from the US. It's in the region of um, $100, I believe. Some of the software increasingly is, is being available online um, for download or for live, live use. Okay, this should be coming out. Okay. Any comments or questions on the glass horse? Okay. Now I'll show you some canine software. You saw some images of this yesterday. This is the virtual canine anatomy. Um, there's a number of different versions here, but we'll look at this version now. Um, and again, I'll just show you briefly to show you the, the depth and the scope of this particular software. This should auto start, I believe. And this was developed at Colorado State University. And for the, um, uh -huh, I how to maximize this. Okay, I think we'll just have to have this in the middle. Okay, and this has now been further developed into a VR model for, for the students. I'll show you a brief clip of that. But we also, again, interviewed the developers um, and the programmers um, of this software, and that will be in another episode of our film series. So here you have the, the nine options, the head, the neck, central nervous system, thoracic limb, and so on. We'll have a look at just the head for this, this taste now. And within that, you have a number of different options. Directional terms, osteology, dissection, radiology, and surface anatomy. If we look at just dissection, again, within that you have multiple options. Superficial dissection, deep dissection, the orbit, the eye, and so on. If we look at just deep dissection, again, within that we have um, 12 to 15 different levels of that deep dissection. So this is page one. Um, we can also look at page two, and so on. Um, then you have the high quality color images upon which you can then click on a structure and get the structure identified. And information there below gives you more information on that with hyperlinks to other structures that are related, okay? So again, a lot of information. And this is, this is uh, um, vessels, it's nerves, it's other, other um, bodies like muscles. You can also click on the menu here and go from the um, from the menu to the structure. So you might want to look at all the vessels, all the veins, and you can do that, okay? There's also a VR specimen where you can, similar to the glass horse just now, you can spin and turn and look at it from different orientations. Um, so again, a lot of labels on the structures, a lot of different levels of that deep dissection. Deep dissection is just one type of dissection, this is just the head that's being looked at. Again, hundreds, if not thousands, of different um, options within the software to support the learning process. If you have this in a book, it'll be heavy, it'll be expensive. Um, here you can go back and forth, and you can learn by yourself at home, within a lab. Teachers can also incorporate this into tests. It's very, very flexible. So the flexibility of digital material is, is often very, very high. So it's a very good way of learning. And this, of course, is just one option within many other options. Software um, with images, software animations, virtual reality options. Um, then you've got the models. You've got real animal cadavers, ethically sourced, we hope, that can be preserved. So a lot of different options, and that's just for anatomy. So I will now close this. You've had a taste of that. Um, and I'll show you a clip of the, um, uh, the new model with the virtual, real the virtual reality. Uh, where is it? Let's just look for it. Here we are. So this is the virtual reality model that was developed out of this software. Um, which I don't think is currently available to the general public. It's being used by students, and it was mostly uh, during the COVID times. Um, but um, again, this shows what can be done, 
and what are the students having the option to be using at Colorado State. Colorado State University builds one of the most widely recognized animal anatomy programs in the world. Virtual Animal Anatomy is the next generation of anatomy software. It offers photorealistic, interactive 3D models in a customized virtual reality environment. Virtual Animal Anatomy simplifies comparative anatomy by highlighting corresponding structures on multiple models of various species. In a cadaver dissection laboratory, delicate anatomical structures are easily damaged. In Virtual Animal Anatomy, every interaction is with professionally dissected, high-quality representative specimens. This immersive environment transforms learning helping students to visualize spatial relationships and key anatomical concepts. Customized resources facilitate teaching efficacy, enabling students to integrate knowledge while becoming adaptable, lifelong learners. Okay, so that's another taste of some good advanced material. Um, and I, I, off, I really believe that within almost every country you have people who've got skills from the anatomists to the programmers to the graphic designers to be able to make items, uh, new, new products, new teaching tools um, at relatively low cost. So th many of these tools do exist around the world and can be bought, but I think there's a lot of potential for local production and selling for that matter. Okay, we have limited time, so I'm, what I'm, I'm not going to show you Pro Dissector Frog, which is a, a zoology software where you can dissolve away the layers of the frog, the skin, the organs, down to the skeleton and bring the structures back up again all with labeling, and have physiology um, clips too, to um, uh, various different sort of uh, um, um, clips of different um, functions within physiology. So we'll have a look at that another time, and I'll come down now and show you some of these models because of the, um, the time we have um, is running out. So um, let me come down. And many of these items are from with, within our alternatives loan system, our free um, library of alternatives. Um, and these are just some examples of some of the tools. It would be nice if we had a Sindava K9 to show you too, but uh, we don't have the funds for that, so we have film instead. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. so there's a lot of different items here. Um, some of them are more focused on anatomy. So this is... Uh, 3D printed bones, so we can, we can, uh, you can print bones as you saw yesterday from uh, um, Sarajevo. This is a, a half finished bone that you can see. You can come up and have a look at all these tools in a few minutes. Um, you can also, of course, preserve specimens. I don't think we have our um, plastinated frog or squid here, but um, uh, occasionally you can, you can look at that as well. Um, there is also the anatomy Dissection models, this is, this is one of them from VetFX. Again, you can uh, do your, your dissection on a non-animal model. And we have the Sindava frog as well. These are currently sealed, um, but you can uh, get a taste of that and you can feel it. And these are new, especially in the US where there's still quite a lot of high school dissection. Um, this is a real game changer in terms of replacement for... Um, uh, for dissection um, of animals, along, of course, with non-animal model and with other um, non-animal models and with software and viewing the animal in ponds, in streams, in rivers, um, frogs and dogfish and so on, where you can actually observe animals in their natural habitat. So that's some of the anatomy. Um, then we have the, the basic surgical skills where you can practice psychomotor skills, get familiar with tools and so on. Um, this is a, um, a basic suture pad, a single layer, but again, has, even though it's very basic, it's sufficient fidelity for that basic level of surgery. And then you have more complex models um, with multiple layers. Um, also, that's an injection pad, sorry, I beg your pardon. This is the, uh, uh, one of the um, suture models. And here's another one um, here that you can actually do suture patterns on, a larger model. Okay, so these can be made from silicone, these can be made from rubber, um, or other, other materials. Sorry, right, I'll just hold it up for everyone to be able to see at the back. 
Um, there's also um, particular organs. This is some bowel. Again, you can practice how to handle, handle this and uh, work with different instruments and to suture. And you can buy full, full sets um, in order to, um, um, for every student to have a, um, a set for their dissection kit. And, and there's also a, a, a pathology on one of these. I won't hold it up because everything's going to fall over. But um, you can see there is um, a pathology. I'll tell you what, I can manage. There we are. Okay. And you can get different pathologies on the, um, on the, uh, the models as well. I should be okay. Um, okay, and then, then you can go to the injection pads. Um, so this is a, a two-layer pad for intramuscular and subcutaneous injections. Again, you can practice and practice and practice again. And it's the importance of that exposure, the importance of practicing um, that needs to be, we need to recognize. Again, sufficient fidelity with a simple model because you're talking about simple basic skills. But getting those right at the beginning is really important because then you're set up for the more complex procedures and you haven't been learning um, bad technique. You can be mentored in your skills lab um, and be very well prepared. Then there are particular um, processes and um, procedures you can practice. This you saw yesterday in photographs, DAISY for you to practice um, intestinal anastomosis. Simple model, but sufficient for that level. Later on, of course, you can work with more complex models. You saw that with the Sindava. Um, this is the insert for the, um, one of the spay neuter models. You can add this to a toy or to a bought model made by the company. Again, and you can practice those procedures before working with real patients and going to do shelter medicine and uh, um, helping animals whilst also learning under supervision. But working first on the non-animal model so that the patient is not um, facing any risk is very, very important. Um, okay, any other ones that's over here? This is a hemostasis model, so you can practice um, uh, management of, of bleeding. Um, these can just be connected up with blood bags like we have here. Um, then there's other specific pr procedures. This is the coconut rat. You can practice um, intubation, taking blood from the tail. Um, of course, handling too. Many people who haven't handled an animal the first time they handle it, they might be scared, nervous, they might drop the animal. So again, you can practice animal handling, and that's really, really important too, as well as the, the clinical skills or the surgical procedures. Um, this is the Sarajevo leg, which um, we've had in our loan system, but we're, we're now returning to Sarajevo. Um, and this is the, the leg that's, that was um, made by Dr. Ibrahim um, Arnautovic. Arnautovic. Arnautovic, yes, sorry. Apologies, Ibrahim. Um, and um, so this was an early model from, from this area, this region. Um, and again, you, know, you, you can make these things yourself. Okay, this is another model here for taking blood on the canine forelimb. Um, you've got the main body of the, of the leg, you've got the tubing for the blood, and then you've got the, the skin which you can fit over the, the model, and then you can practice finding the vessel, practice the, the process of, of, um, of using the needle, finding the vessel and taking the blood. Um, again, you can pra keep practicing, and that's so important. Um, because it's, the, it's the, often those practical skills, those hands-on skills that veterinary students don't have upon graduation. I say it's often. It's, it's, it's certainly a challenge and that needs to be overcome. And, and when s clinical skills labs are established, then students have access to those tools, can master the, schools, the, the, um, the skills, and have the competence and confidence to then work with real patients in the teaching hospital or, or in the clinic um, and in, in practice afterwards. Now we've got very little time left, so finally I'll finish off with Jerry. Um, Jerry often travels with me, but in this case actually came from Sarajevo, but certainly we're both happy to see each other. And with both Jerry, critical care Jerry, and with the Sindava K9, you have a wide range of functionality. So with Jerry, you can teach people who might be nervous of, about dogs, the general public, on basic sort of veterinary care, how to approach the animal, how to be more careful with the animal. Um, and that's something that the general public could have a, 
a learning experience with. Of course, you have limp four limbs, which you can practice uh, bandaging as you can with other um, small and large animals, horses, cows, and so on. Um, so you've got bandaging. You can also um, practice mouth-to-snout resuscitation because within the body you have synthetic lungs. This is where actually it would be useful to have a help with the microphone, please. Sure, sure. Pardon? It's okay. So I will hold Jerry up, and here you can see the synthetic lung. Okay. Um, and um, so when you do mouth-to-snout resuscitation, you can see the chest rise, sorry, see the chest rise and fall. Um, I'll see whether I can do that, and then you should see something happening. Okay. But again, you're practicing how to do it well, and you should do it more hygienically than I just did. <coughs> anyway, um, and it's better, to be honest, to learn to do that straight away, um, all the time. <laughs> okay. We also have the um, a pulse bulb, so you can you can squeeze this, or uh, well, someone else squeezes it, and you're going to find you're going to find the vessels in the leg and feel the pulse. You can find the right position. Just become familiar with finding that and testing and uh, and measuring the pulse. Okay. Um, you also have. Um, the throat, the, the esophagus, and the trachea, and that can be connected inside, and then you can practice intubation, finding the right diameter, doing that, and again, no stress for the student, no stress for, the, for a real animal. You can practice this so that you're better prepared for when you do work with a real animal. So you can, you can follow the visual and tactile cue, clues and cues in order to do this correct, correctly. And if you cause injury, it's okay. You've learned, you can learn from that, and no animal has been harmed in the process. So that's the intubation. Um, we also have a broken bone in the leg, a bone insert. So here we have the bone insert, and inside that um, is, is one of several different bones and fractures that you can buy or 3D print yourself. So we have, um, you can have sort of one type of fracture, two, three types of fractures and others. And then you can actually do the whole, pr the whole process of preparing for the surgery and fixing that bone. So everything from gloving and gowning and preparing, draping, doing everything right and then actually fixing that, uh, that fracture. So again, you're prepared when you work with a real patient because you've done it already and you've faced all the sort of emotional um, uh, scenarios and experiences that you will have as well as the technical, practical aspects. Um, so that's very, very important. And then finally, have I covered all of, his, uh, all of his functions? I do believe so. Finally, we have the, the breath and heart sound simulator, which is uh, something very important. This is the... This is the, uh, the simulator itself, and then we have two modules, one of breath sounds and one of heart sounds. And we connect this up to Jerry. We plug it in. There's a ba it's battery-powered. We choose, for example, the, uh, the breath sounds module, turn it on, and then within the chest there's um, and the abdomen, there are multiple... Um, small loudspeakers and so in this case 14 different sounds from different uh, that reflect different pathologies can be heard and this is something that you wouldn't actually hear it would take you 10 years to hear this with with a range of patients okay so this is something where the model is not only um, offers replacement for intubation and for um, Taking blood, I forgot about taking blood. You can uh, give injections and take blood from the neck and the forelimb as well. Um, so not only have you got those functionalities as potential replacements, you've also got additional learning opportunities from the breath sounds and the heart sounds. So if we put the microphone on the chest, we should be able to, yes, hear the breath, the breath sounds. 
Okay, a little bit hard to hear, I think, with the microphone. I can hear it from here. Um, and this, I think, I've, I've pressed number three, bronchovesicular. Number four is, uh, is tracheal, bronchial. And then number five is wheezes. Number six, monophonic wheeze. And these are all sounds that can help you in the diagnosis of different conditions. Again, you'd need many years of experience in the clinic, but here you have a model to experience this in advance. And I, when I was in Kenya, I was doing a demonstration of this. There was a vet from Uganda who listened to just four or five different sounds. And then he emailed me a few months ago and said, when I was back in Uganda, I had a patient, I listened to her breath sounds and her ha heart sounds, and I was able to diagnose the condition from, ha from what I heard on Jerry in Kenya a few months before. So that's not only, I think, demonstrates someone with excellent memory and uh, ability to remember those, those sounds, but also the quality, of a, um, the quality of a good model that can bring you those experiences. So um, you, of course, can be using your, your stethoscope to hear that, or you can put your ear to, to Jerry. Um, so I think because of time, we, I'll let, yes, let Vladimir have a listen. Can you hear that? Yeah. Interesting. You can hear also. Yeah. And of course, every, every sound is different. Let's try that again. Ooh, can I flicker? That one there is breath sounds, but it's a... You should have this one. <laughs> yeah, I don't. But what, yeah. what we can do is we can finish the demos now, and you're very well welcome to come up for a few minutes, have a look at all of these models, and have a listen to Jerry's many problems. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to make him better, so it's all good. Katrina, did you want to add something? No, no, okay. Does anyone have any questions about the, the last uh, softwares or the models I was showing? Lily? I mean, da? Yeah, I think that there is a risk, of course, with, with high tech and um, software models that um, some people think that you're being removed from reality somehow and you don't get hands-on experience. But I'd say that the, what you're really doing is using technology to support the learning process in very specific areas. No one will, will, will be learning just with virtual reality in physiology or in clinical skills or surgery. They'll be working with the model and virtual reality, maybe self-experimentation as well, and then work with real animal or human patients. So you'll always have these multiple... Um, ways of learning that are, have all got their benefits, but together can far exceed what you might have had before with an animal experiment or just a lack of, of, of good learning and training tools. Um, so yeah, it'll always be a combination. Um, and I think virtual reality, including haptics, the, the simulation of the sense of touch, um, is really excellent, but it really needs to be used in combination with a high fidelity mannequin um, and with also low fidelity mannequins for early stages of surgical training, um, along with sort of software animations and so on that can provide another aspect of that education and training. But it's a good question. There's a risk of becoming somehow removed from reality. We can see that with all spending too much time on Facebook, I'm sure. But um, uh, in balance, psychological and pedagogical balance, I think the combination of tools can, can really be excellent in terms of meeting and exceeding standing, standard teaching objectives and being able to do more, just like being able to experience these breath sounds and heart sounds, which you really wouldn't get the experience of learning if you didn't have this model. Um, I do have some other virtual reality clips within surgery, which we haven't looked at, but at least you saw the virtual anatomy program. When it comes to surgery, you're, you're, you've got a sort of live interaction between the virtual tools and the virtual body. So it's even more complex um, mathematical modeling um, and good graphics are need, good graphics card, of course, are needed for that. Um, anyone who wants to see that, I can show you the clip on my laptop afterwards. Maida? Uh, 
uh, I just want to add something for Jerry. Uh, Jerry stayed as borrowed uh, equipment at Sarajevo University for three years. And uh, now, as we had to take it here, uh, they are purchasing it now. So this is how great it is for your studies. Okay, so that's the end of the, thank you for that. That's the end of the demo. I'll be passing you on to Vladimir, who will uh, be closing the event and then telling you about your chance to uh, come and have a listen to Jerry. <laughs>